I'm going to have a tutorial on how to build a network monitor using PHP, MySQL, JavaScript, and HTML. I've begun the process of building this and I want to go ahead and describe where I am so far and then I'm going to go back to the beginning and just start from scratch. What I have here is devices and I have a few different buildings that I'm monitoring and in each building I have a set of switches and they're tied together in a stacking formation. Each one has an ID and a name and then what I'm doing is I'm going to keep track of the one minute average, the ten minute average, and the one hour average and all I'm monitoring at this point is the main interface, the fiber interface into each one. Now there's no data right now because I'm not actually collecting the data. I'm going to start that and show you how that all works in this beginning tutorial. Over here we can open and close this menu. I'm hoping to have additional information for users that are allowed to see additional information. There's going to be a login screen up here. Anyone that you send to this should be able to just visually see what's happening on the network. Right now, if I click on Equipment, nothing happens. If I click on Users, nothing happens. So we're going to go ahead and log in. See that I'm logged in, and now if I, pick up, if I click on Equipment, the menu stays open. I'm going to go ahead and show you Users first because it's a simpler menu. There's going to be a, a screen to input new users and then you'll be able to select the number of users you see per screen and you'll be able to move through the total number of users. So if I have 20 entries and 20 screens there's approximately 400 users. If I change the number of entries then the number of pages goes down which makes sense. Now I am going to add sorting buttons on each one of the columns and I may even add a quicker way to get through the pages like by 10 or all the way to the end. If I go to the equipment menu I'll have a sub menu. At this point I just have the equipment in there so I'll click on that. Now I had to pause the screen while it's loading the equipment. The equipment, there's a lot of equipment and it takes a long time to load and that's something that I'm going to fix during the while I create this tutorial and, and go through the steps of how I'm going to do this. I don't have the the portion of the menu where we can enter a new piece of equipment but I do have the editing in. So right now if I want to I can click on this ZE24 which is just an ID for a random piece of equipment and I can just change it. So now it's ZE241. This is the model number of the access point that's from Aruba. And if I, I can change it now if I want, I'll make it a 103H. And that actually holds right now. So if I refresh the page, that would stay. And you can see that it stayed at AP 103H and ZE 241. I'm going to go ahead and change those back. Now these two fields are not editable because they are tied to this model. This model is an Aruba and it is an access point. What I'm hoping in the menu over here would be to have models and then you would be able to adjust the manufacturer and the type and then down here you would have a manufacturer and a type. It takes a long time to load this data and I want to go into a little bit of that. So you can press F12 and it will bring up the inspector. And then down here it can show you information about what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and reload this. And you'll see we get a post here. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse here until the post request is complete. Okay, so the post is complete. And it took 20 seconds or 21,000 milliseconds. But using this you can get a lot of information from this. If I click on it and I'm on the network here. It shows the header that is sent when we make that post request. Since I'm logged in as a user, it gives me my session ID. This is the parameters and this, is, this information is sent to a PHP file called equip.php and that's where the logic happens in the background. 
and then in the response that's what's sent back and it takes a minute because what I currently do is all 177 pages of 20 records each which is almost 4,000 records it sends all of those records back as I'm building this I'm gonna consider maybe only sending the page that I'm currently viewing back what's really nice about this um, F12 or this developer section down here is you can see the data you're sending back so if I click on this let me go ahead and raise this up if you click on this you can see the data that's coming back I'm not only pulling back these four columns I'm pulling more information I'm pulling the serial number the model number the manufacturer the MAC address the location on the campus where that this equipment is now in the database I'm storing this information across multiple tables so I've modified the query in a way to pull back information from multiple tables and that's another thing that could be slowing it down or maybe I don't have it indexed right these are things that we'll go over as we create the tutorial I'm also not sure how I have this sorted I can't really remember I probably just am not sorting it but it does always come back in this order but if you go down to the next one you can see that GB28 GB28. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see how many records we're returning. We're returning 3,531 records. So if we were only to return 20 records, it would it would speed it up. Now we're going to go back to the home page. I'm going to go ahead and move this down. I'm going to go back to this home page, and we're going to start collecting some data on here. What I do right now is I manually, since this is in development mode, I manually collect the data. And what I have is I just have a text document over here where I cut and paste the commands. So I need to change the directory. When I'm running this in administrator mode. So I paste that in. It's just simply so I don't have to type this in over and over. We're going to use SNMP to collect the data, and there's a library that's part of PHP that helps us do that. And what you can see now is I've started a collection, and it's completed a collection. It does this every minute. So now I can minimize that knowing that that's running in the background. On the main screen here, I'm going to go over what it does. So the, what this F12 does, it shows that we load the index.html page that's the page that is referred to when you go to the website then it loads some JavaScript files navigation because I broke up my JavaScript into multiple files just for ease so the login functions are a separate one the monitor JS is where I go out and read the data off the file that was created by that command prompt that I just had open and then I've got the CSS which is the styling and you can see we got our first set of data what's interesting is when it first pulls it up it doesn't always get a full set and also the one minute average since we only have one reading or two readings is going to be the same across every bit of this so now as we collect more and more data this will start to change but back down to this area so I also broke up my styling into my header and my footer, my navigation, and then the main area here. The PHP functions are what ask whether I'm logged in or not. Monitor PHP is a file that will run over and over. This runs every minute and it's triggered by a JavaScript file. Here are the images that appear at the top. If you notice I get an error on the Facebook image and if you look there's a space in between the P and the NG so that PNG file isn't being located so I get a 404 error but the Instagram and then a left and right arrow which, and then a favicon icon is something that will appear up at the top but I don't have one of those created yet and then if you notice it keeps running the monitor monitor so this has been running for about four readings so far and if you look the one minute average is probably correct right now the 10 minute average probably isn't until we get 10 readings and then of course the hour reading won't be correct until we get 60 readings 
I do want to add syslog capture so the switches themselves can send out log files to give you an indication of what's going on. And then if you notice that this green color, what I have is, is 0 to 20, there's no background color. I believe it's 20 to 70 will show up as green. 70 to like 110, 120 meg will show up as yellow. And then anything really high shows up as red. It lets me know if, if, anyone, if any one building is pulling an excessive amount of data. That's just an introduction to what I'm hoping to go over in this whole tutorial set. Like I said, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and we're going to just build this file from scratch. I'm going to start with the index.html and build it all the way out. I'm going to try to be descriptive in the title, so if there's some sections you don't care about, you can skip them. If there's some like if you only care about the JavaScript, you can see the JavaScript. If you only want the PHP, you can look at the PHP. I'll do my best to label the tutorials in a way that you can pick and choose the ones that you want and not get lost or have to watch every single minute of every single tutorial. I hope that you find this interesting. Thanks for watching.